Would you attach electrodes to your head and give your brain mild doses of electricity if you thought it would boost your focus, memory, and creativity? A growing number of Americans are doing this at home with simple devices they can put together themselves. And it's drawing the attention of the formal medical community. Here with the story is WSJ reporter Amy Doxer Marcus. Amy, thanks so much for being with us. Thank you. So there is this growing world of do-it-yourself brain hacking out there. Tell us exactly how electric brain stimulation works. The devices are fairly simple, um, and you can actually find YouTube videos of, online of people using them. But it applies a very low level of electricity, a direct and constant low level, to your head via these electrodes that sit on your scalp. And the people that are doing these at home report what? A boost, boosted focus, greater creativity? What are they saying it does for them? Yes, they're, they're, they're mainly, some of them are mainly using it for um, better focus, better creativity when they have a project at work. Um, there are also some people probably who have medical conditions that feel that they haven't, you know, been treated adequately that think it may help. Right. But, uh, the, you know, primarily the people who are posting online are using it in more of a recreational way. So are there scientists who are somewhat confused that so many people are willing to do this without concrete evidence that it isn't harmful? I think that the questions that are being raised by the sort of medical establishment is that there is quite a growing body of data involving trials and testing and using these devices um, with people whose brains are injured in some way because they have an illness or a condition. What they're concerned about is that it's not clear yet if you could apply that same evidence that's growing to people who have healthy brains, essentially, and are using it for different purposes. Right. So there aren't official numbers on how many people are doing this at home without medical supervision. Is that correct? Yes, I mean, there's been some published data by a researcher at Stanford University who's been um, looking at the community, and there's some other academic research um, by a researcher at MIT who's been investigating the community. But it's still hard to get hard numbers because um, there are online sites where people go and even chat on Reddit, but the people drop in and out. It's, it's not clear how many numbers total there are. And through these sites, though, we can get a picture of mostly who is doing it, though. Is that right? The published uh, a published paper by the Stanford researcher, um, she did a survey of several hundred people, and she found that primarily the people that answered these questions were um, were men um, in their 20s and 30s, uh, white men primarily. And now, interesting, it, it, there have been a lot of medical conferences about neurostimulation lately, and the Food and Drug Administration is holding a two-day workshop on the topic this month. But there's an interesting piece of all of this that looks at the role of citizen scientists and who really gets to use the tools of science. What do you think about that, Amy? Um, I think that uh, the whole issue of citizen science is becoming increasingly important, especially in an area like this where you can build it yourself or you get access to it on your own. And uh, Many of the researchers that I've spoken with, they've called for greater kind of uh, discussion between the traditional medical establishment and the citizen science community with the hope that actually they might be able to benefit one another by sharing data and discussing some of the challenges to using these technologies in a home environment. Is it too early to say where all of this is going? Does this sort of do-it-yourself brain stimulation look promising? I think it's too early to tell. Certainly there's a lot of interest, but I think that, um, you know, that it would be helpful for people to share data. There have been a growing number of uh, panel discussions and conferences, and there have been some calls to, to have both parties on the panel, both citizen scientists who are doing it themselves and doctors and researchers studying in a clinic, to just open up the lines of communication, and only then will we know where this is headed. Very interesting stuff, Amy. Thank you so much for that.